Good morning and welcome to our Good Friday communion service. I'm Chaplain Amy Bauman with For His Glory Ministry, and I am so glad that you're choosing to join us today to set apart part of your day to look to the cross, to be grateful and thankful for what Jesus did for each one of us, the ultimate sacrifice he made so that we can have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. That's why we're here today, to be grateful, to celebrate, and to remember the cross. We're going to open up today with a time of worship and then spend some time uh, in communion together as a body of believers and then look at the text today and unpack God's word as we read about the crucifixion. But before we get started, let's open all of this up with prayer. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for today. I thank you that you sent your one and only son into this world to die on a cross that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for each one of us. He turned the altar into a table that each of us can have a seat at, that each of us can partake in that everlasting life, Lord. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for that choice that you give each one of us. And I just pray today as we celebrate, as we look to the cross, that if there is anyone that has still not accepted that invitation, that this would be the moment. This would be the opportunity where they sit down and eat with you. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this time. We just ask that you will open up our hearts and our ears for what it is that you have for us and that we will truly remember this gift. We love you and praise you and thank you. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's worship our King.
Jesus, this is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus.
Jesus paid it all. My sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Thank you, Jesus. If you have your elements, you want to get those out as we take communion together. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and when they had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. If you remember, the Lord's Supper took place on Passover. And originally, the Israelites put blood on lamb's blood on the doorposts and the frames so that when the angel of death would see that uh, to come and take the firstborn, he would pass over. And Jesus is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And as we break bread together and drink from the cup, it is a reminder of what Jesus did on the cross. His body was broken for each one of us. His blood was shed for each one of us. And when we do this, we do this in remembrance of him and what he did on the cross. After the supper, they went out to the Mount of Olives and then a place called Gethsemane. Jesus had prayed to his father while the disciples slept, unable to stay awake with him and pray with him. When the soldiers came, led by Judas, his disciple, Judas kissed him on the cheek and Jesus said, do what you came for, friend. The guards stepped forward, seized Jesus and arrested him. He was taken before the Sanhedrin, then to Pilate, where Pilate could not find a reason to sentence him to death. But all the while, the, shout, the crowds shouted, crucify him. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. 
Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb. Then he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate, Sir, they said, We remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, After three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go, make the tomb as secure as you know. So they went out and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. I know that it's hard to put yourself in this story and visualize everything that happened, but I can imagine for a moment that it may have looked and sounded something like this. Lahu Danesh Hana Hayau Le Ahudo Dat Marlan Ina Natu Mashiha Bara de Haleha Anea Na Good Fah!
Arschlamm. I know for me, this day is uncomfortable. Uncomfortable for a few reasons. One, because I know what I was like in my past life. I know the sins that I committed. I know how many times I denied Jesus. Maybe not out in public, but I did in my heart. And when I think about everything he went through, On this day, over 2,000 years ago, so that I could sit in this chair and have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life and this relationship with God the Father that the Lord created when he tore that curtain in two, we have complete access to the throne room of God. It's uncomfortable to know what he went through to give me that freedom. It's uncomfortable to sit in today and know that he was flogged and mocked and ridiculed and spit on and nailed to a cross and that it wasn't the nails that held him there. It was all of my sin and shame and awful thoughts and bad deeds and rejection and every thing that I have done in my life and all the sin that I have not yet committed is what held him to the cross. And it wasn't just my sin. It was your sin as well. It was the entire world's sin that held him there. That is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to sit in and to think about, but we do it We watch images like the video that we just watched. We go through this day each year specifically so that we never forget. So that we never forget what Jesus did on the cross for each one of us. That we never forget the ultimate sacrifice that he made. That we never forget that we are given a seat at the table. But we need to choose. We need to choose to sit down and eat with him and have that relationship with him to make him Lord of our life. It's uncomfortable and it's challenging. And today may be Friday, but we can rejoice because Sunday's coming and we know that he rose again from the dead and he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. And then he's coming again to take us home. I want to encourage you today to sit in that uncomfortable, to remember what Jesus did on the cross for you, to examine your heart and make sure that It's aligned with God's word and the plans and the purpose that he has for your life. And to celebrate that we have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life, each one of us. But it's up to us. What will we choose? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for today. May we sit in this uncomfortable, but let us rejoice, Lord, knowing that Sunday's coming and Jesus was resurrected and that we have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. I pray for each person listening today, each person watching, that they will look to the cross. They will love you and serve you 
and that they will make that choice to sit down and eat with you at your table. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for celebrating uh, Good Friday and being a part of this service. And we look forward to seeing you on Easter Sunday. But until then, be blessed.